Hi, my name is Ben. Molly. Tambi. <laughs> We're going to tell you about boondocking in our RV. Hi, Ben here with Sailboat Story, and we are here to tell you about how our RV is set up for boondocking. We're currently located about 20 miles southeast of the town called Laramie in Wyoming. We're fairly close to the Colorado border and are boondocking on a bit of forestry land. So yeah, we want to give you a little tour of our RV and uh, really focus on different uh, equipment and gear and uh, practices that really help us boondock in our RV. Here we go. All right, so we're gonna start on the outside here first. I'm gonna climb up top and show you our solar setup. Okay, so here we have two 170 watt solar panels from a company called Bouge RV. And these are excellent panels. Very, very happy with them. And on a sunny day like this, as long as we aren't partially shaded by that tree, which we actually happen to be right now, uh, these are more than adequate for our solar needs. So that's basically the solar panels. Let me show you what's going on inside. So they're wired into this cable here. And then let's go down inside the RV and I'll show you the charge controller. Hello, ladies. Hello. All right, I'm going to go tell them about the solar. Okay. I'll be right back. Here's our solar charge controller by a company called ePever or ePever, whatever that is. It's the tracer unit, and this is the 400 watt unit. This is another little device that comes with it. It's just a separate little um, remote readout that gives you a little bit more data. But this is very, very nice. It only costs, I, th I think, 150, 175 bucks, something like that, which is excellent for one of these little charge controllers, especially an MPPT. And then the charge controller just feeds down into two uh, just standard deep cycle batteries. They're not even anything fancy. Not AGMs, not lithium, nothing like that. But we've had really good luck with uh, just the standard deep cycles. Although I, I accept the fact that they're probably not going to last as long. But uh, for our uses, they've been more than adequate. This black box here is something that's kind of related to our solar system or our solar setup uh, because this is charged by the solar panels that are up top or charged by the generator or whatever else we have going but generally we charge it with the solar panels but this is called a solar generator by this company here energy and this is the kodiak unit i think they have an even newer version of this now called the apex but this is very very handy it's got all these household plugs it has uh, 12 volt plugs usbs uh, and this has its own lithium internal battery pack and it also has a built-in pure sine wave inverter, uh, which is what we're actually using it for here, because this cord goes up here, over here, all along this, and actually just comes out here in the front side of the RV, where we can use it to run the, uh, the monitor there, or to charge our Nintendo thing here, to run this power strip, or to charge batteries there, to charge this speaker, or any number of things. But yeah, so that is our solar setup uh, and also how we use this Kodiak solar generator to kind of run all of our household appliances. One other thing I want to show you outside uh, while we're talking about power generation is our generator in this RV. Ta-da! 
That is the Onan Microlite 4000. 4000 watt generator, gas powered. It uses anywhere from a quarter of a gallon an hour to a half gallon, depending on how much load there is on it. Uh, but we, we really don't use this generator all that much uh, because we have such a good solar setup. But we have been using it quite a bit here the last couple days because uh, basically if we need to heat the RV, we're gonna have to run the generator because the generator has to be run Running to power our 120 uh, volt you know household little space heater or if we need to even run the propane heater inside the RV the the blower motor of that heater uses quite a bit of power so those are the times we use uh, the generator but it's very handy to have uh, you know when needed especially if you have a series of cloudy days uh, which we have had here recently. In fact, in a little time-lapse video we took uh, two days ago, the sky was just completely covered in smoke from all of these wildfires out west, and the solar panels did very little for us in those, uh, those really cloudy, smoky days. So a generator is very handy to have. If we didn't have this generator, uh, I would be taking along with us one of those uh, Honda or Yamaha uh, generators. I, I think those are 2000 or 2200 watt generators if I'm not mistaken, but those are excellent little, little generators And if you're going to be boondocking a generator is a good thing to have Next we are going to talk about water and saving water and using water and all things water Water. How do you want me to do this? You want me to like tee up a question to you or yeah? Yeah, sure. Okay. All right, Tambi What do you think about water? We need it <laughs> <laughs> That's too vague, isn't it? <laughs> Okay, Tammy, what are some ways that we save water while we are boondocking? Well, we have a shower head that is very water conservative. Show us. I suppose. Let's go. All right, so that there oxygenic shower head, what's so great about that? Uh, it, I guess it uses air. <laughs> I don't know. You bought it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So that, the shower head is just an efficient shower head. Apparently it mixes air into the water and it just helps you use less water. Still, uh, it's a vast improvement over the stock shower head, but it still uses a lot of water. Yeah. So if you really want to save water, you got to go to the next level. The next level. Which is? The wheat sprayer. Some of our loyal fans may recognize this contraption from our sailboat adventures. It is but a three gallon weed sprayer, much like you would get from Home Depot. Yes, and Ben has uh, given it a little upgrade for our showering purposes. Uh -huh. By the way, this is the extreme in saving water with your showers, right? Yes. Yes. I think we, when we shower using this, I, I think we use about six gallons of water as a family. When we're using this, we use about three. Yep. So, this used to have a very short black line on it. Uh -huh. It's a very long hose, or whatever this thing's called. Uh -huh. Wand. The wand. Yes, yes. So, Ben uh, put on this longer one, and then he shortened the wand so yeah. that we can reach, yes, yes. reach things. Uh huh. Because with the wand, you know, you're kind of like. Yeah, yeah, that that's not proper not weed proper. sprayer shower ergonomics. Yeah. So yeah, so so I chopped this thing much much shorter, and that's actually just epoxy and a strip of t-shirt <laughs> that I used to shorten that. Yeah, longer clear hose, and that's really it. I, I think I might actually take some black flex seal and paint this thing black so we can keep it out in the sun to actually heat it up sometime. Haven't done that yet though. Mm -hmm. All right, so mock up how the shower works, Tammy. All right, first you pump it. Then you, then you wet down, then you wash, then you rinse. That's how it's done. Here is another thing that really helps with boondocking. That is a composting toilet. You can refill this thing and empty it just with a garbage bag and um, you know some peat moss or coco core that you would get from the hardware store. You can dump the pee jug into the bushes somewhere and you are not basically forced to go empty your black tank whenever you are using a composting toilet because your black tank is no longer used as a black tank. Which brings me to another benefit of the composting toilet. Double gray tanks. 
Okay, so what I mean by double gray tanks is that whenever you are not using your black tank for an RV toilet, it can be used for another purpose. What we have going on here is at the storage bay or whatever it is where the sewer setup basically is in this RV. This one is our normal gray tank. This one is what would normally be the black tank. However, we use both of these as gray tanks. And that is done simply by having a an extra blade valve installed on the outboard end of the, the plumbing here. So as you can see, this is how it works. You, you would open this one to, to dump the gray tank. You would normally open this one, pulling it out, to dump the black tank. But by putting this extra blade valve here, I can close this one, open this, open this, and now the fluid can freely flow between the two tanks. So that's what I mean by double, double uh, gray tanks. And what makes this possible is this added blade valve there. And of course, the composting toilet that we use. But this is a very good setup. It gives us a ton more uh, capacity for carrying our waste water. To show you one other thing relating to water when you're boondocking. Now the tank inside this RV I think is 40 or 50 gallons, something like that. And we can go quite a while on that. But here's another handy thing that helps us keep our tanks full. And that simply is these collapsible water jugs right there. We have two of those. There's one there and there's one, uh, one there. And we are basically inside the car. Uh, this is where these jugs ride at. Um, basically we keep them in the car because uh, whenever we go into town, we will empty these jugs into the RV and then take the empty jugs with us into town. Whenever we go to the grocery store for laundry or going on some adventure or something like that, we can grab a couple, you know, jugs of water and then bring them back to the RV and fill them up. So yeah, keeping a couple jugs with you wherever you go in whatever vehicle you go to town in, you know, and then just come back and top off your tanks. And that really helps you extend your water. While I'm outside here, let me tell you about our cell signal booster. So if you can see right there, right there, that is a cell signal booster by a company called SureCall. And basically what it does is it gives us an extra bar or two of service. Now there has to be some level of service in the area that you're operating in in order to boost the signal of it. So it's not like this magical thing that gives you service everywhere you go. But for instance, if you're somewhere in a service area, say for Verizon, and you can only get one bar on your cell phone, by turning on that antenna, it'll give you three bars. So that's another very handy thing to have. Especially for us when we're trying to upload videos and stuff like that from remote locations. Yeah, cell phone signal booster. All right, so here's something interesting that I, I normally wouldn't include with, uh, you know, just general boondocking gear. However, with uh, what seems like the entire west half of the United States being on fire, this is a very helpful device. It is a air purifier. It's got a carbon filter and a HEPA filter, and it filters about, I think, 240 square feet, which is just right for this RV. And it basically makes the air just breathable. I mean, we're just covered up with smoke. And uh, if it weren't for this device here, I mean, we would be having, you know, headaches and, you know, just all the smoke is very irritating. And this son of a gun here works very, very well. So, yeah, an air purifier. This is by a company called... Elec Homes. Nice little unit. Moving on. Molly, you're so dark here in the shadow. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, next Molly is going to tell you about pest control. Yes. That's important, isn't it? Yes. Definitely. <laughs> tell me more. How do you control pests when you are boondocking in an RV? Well, we figured out here yesterday that you need mouse traps. They are very important. Uh huh. A and an RV. Yeah, so a little backstory there. So we were, I think, watching. God, this light looks so crazy. <laughs> oh, well, we're just going to be shadow people. So we were watching Lord of the Rings on our TV, and then we saw these dark shadows running about on the floor right here inside the RV. 
and then uh, we basically just had to live with the mice that whole night because we didn't have any way to uh, discourage them from coming in the RV. We didn't have any traps, anything like that. However, the next day we went out and got all kinds of traps and that same day we trapped four mice. Four. Yep. Mouse traps. Very important. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Molly, is there any other tool that would help with uh, pest uh, prevention? Bugs, mice, maybe flies? Fly swaddle. Oh yeah, is that important? Yes. How many flies have we killed, Molly? Oh, uh, a lot. Look at that. <laughs> we actually have this tally going here. Uh, this has not been updated in quite a while, but I think this is Tamby's, this is my tally here, and this is Molly's. So she has slayed many, many flies. Mm -hmm. Yeah, show me how it works, Molly. Like, like, okay, let's imagine there's a fly right there, get him! Just like that, people. <laughs> That's how fast it happens. <laughs> All right, so talk about food, Tamby. Any special things that help us uh, keep food cool or, you know, maybe that fridge there? The refrigerator, <laughs> yes. On the boat, you know, our fridge was very small. Uh huh. Powered and by 12 volt 12 only. 12 volt, yeah. yes. The refrigerator and the freezer, which means I have ice, uh -huh. and then the RV is two-way. It is 120 volts and propane. Mm -hmm. So when we're boondocking, we use our propane mm -hmm. with our it, yeah. propane tank. And if the generator happens to be on, or if we, if we were plugged in, it would be running on 120, but yes. it's pretty cool yeah. that you can run a, a refrigerator with propane. It's still very strange to me. Yep. But very nice for boondogging. It is very nice. Now we are going to talk about some RV apps that we use to find good places to boondock. Uh, all of them have different strengths and uses and downsides and such as that, but there are four main ones Tamby uses. What are they? The first one is Campendium. The second one is All Stays. The third one is The Dirt. And the fourth one is I Overlander. So what's Campendium used for? Campendium can show you free spots, RV parks, it can show you dump stations, places to get water, um, all those other, you know, just places like that. And what's All Stays about? All Stays shows you all of those things, except it also has, if there's road work or bridges that are too short and to what's, go under. And then I Overlander? I Overlander is mostly a wild camping app. It shows you RV parks, but it's mostly used for looking for wild camping or boondocking. Mm -hmm. And then what's the dirt? The dirt I don't use very often, but it is very useful when iOverlander or Campendium aren't showing things that I want to see. Um, the dirt is mostly for hikers or bikers or tent campers, but sometimes it has good RV apps or places to stay. Okay, and there's one more. It's not an app, right? It's a membership? Yes, it is a membership. It's $50 a year, and it's called Boondockers Welcome, mm -hmm. and it's been very helpful. So it's just basically people who have land or an empty spot in their driveway, and you message them and say, hey, can we come spend the night in your yard? And mm -hmm. they're like, yeah, come on. So mm -hmm. you just sleep mm -hmm. in their yard. And some of them do have some hookups, or they let you fill your water tank. Uh, sometimes it's free. Sometimes they ask for donations. Mm -hmm. But that's been awesome. We've yes. we've saved a ton of money doing that. Yeah. And we use it the most for like when we're traveling from one point to another. Yeah. Not really hanging out for a right. week. Yeah. Boondockers, welcome. We love it. We hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, leave a like, a thumbs up, or a comment. If you did not enjoy this video, move along. Right, Molly, do you know the song Row, Row, Row Your Boat? Yes. Okay, say the word row. 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 Your boat. Gently. Down. The. Stream. <laughs> Merry. Merrily. <laughs> Merrily. Merrily. Life. Is. A. <laughs> but. A. Dream. <laughs> <laughs> Obviously, we're not going to be winning any singing competitions. <laughs> no.